I'd like to call the City Council meeting for the City of Calexico to order at 6.35 p.m. today, December 21st, 2010. We did not meet in closed session, so at this point I'd like to have everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll have Sonny Moreno lead us off in the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, Pancho Moreno. Okay. Oh. I pledge at this point, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. moved by Councilman Romero. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman. Excuse me, prior to taking uh, the vote, I think they wanted to pull a couple of items. Okay. Item, item 11. Item 11. Okay. Item 11. Item Pulled. 11. That's the parking lot for the fire department. Pulled. Police and fire department. Police and fire. And the two closed session items will actually be removed entirely from the agenda at this Which time. One? Okay. Number 11. What else? And the closed session items. Number 22. Uh, Mayor, uh, motion to accept the agenda as is with the uh, three items being pulled. Just 11, okay. uh, would you like to second uh, Councilman Hurtado? Yes, that would not include the uh, agenda for enterprise funded permits? So no. Again? We're only talking about. We're general. just talking about 11. Okay. 11 and A and B in closed session. Okay, second. There's a motion on the floor, there's a second. There's oh. Okay. Uh, remember that there was probably a need to pull 22B. 22B, that's correct. 22B. Okay, so items removed will be closed session A and B, item 11, and 22B. Motion. Motion moved, and there's our second. 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 All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Announcements, public comments. Public comments are welcome. Speakers will be limited to three minutes. Please complete a speaker form prior to the start of the meeting. If the item you wish to comment on is a closed session item, please comment now. If the item you wish to comment on is a public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. We have one uh, public comment, and that is Ms. Carmen Estrada. <coughs> Buenas tardes. Gracias por dar de estos minutos. Y este... Y pues vengo con una satisfacción que llevamos a cabo un torneo de básquetbol viernes, sábado y domingo, en los cuales eh, fue un torneo entre escuelas, en los cuales el equipo de la DUL quedó en primer lugar, que el coach es Mr. Moreno. Y pues fue para mí un honor y una satisfacción que fue algo, pues fue un éxito este torneo, la verdad, que estoy muy, muy contenta de todos los niños y de Mr. Moreno. No sé si podamos decir los nombres brevemente de los niños. ¿Se puede? Ok. Ok, we'll start off with Bobby Lucero. Y Bobby. Come over here, come over here, Bobby. Bobby. Come over here, up, up, up the run. Why don't you get to the team? Daniel Castillo. <laughs> Sonny Moreno. <laughs> hey, Sonny. Isaiah Carrillo. First time. Starbucks. <laughs> Gary Robinson. Congratulations. Jonathan Reyes. Yes. 
Israel. <laughs> Does he have a last name, Cheeto? <laughs> Sorry, that was Israel Padilla. I forgot his last name momentarily. <laughs> Kobe Robinson. Son. Frankie. And Frank Moreno the third. Oh. And this plaque is for me. Thank you very much. All right. Eh, la escuela César Chávez sacó segundo lugar con un joven que pues este niño empezó cuando yo empecé PAL eh, pues está dando lo que le dimos, está dando él a la César Chávez, él es coach ya traemos puros jóvenes de coach en las escuelas y el señor Moreno pues dirigiendo a nuestros jóvenes y pues yo en lo personal estoy muy contenta You, you have one more, don't you? Okay. And this is our last player, Gerardo. What's your last name? Tobar. <laughs> Gerardo Tobar. I, I don't know their last names yet. But Gerardo. Cesar Vázquez, el coach de Cesar Chávez. Brandon Villaverdes. Lucero. Move this way. Stand over here. Luis Venegas. Roberto Perroni. And last but not least, Horacio Perroni. Thank you very much. Y ya por para terminar, eh, quiero dar esta, la verdad, este reconocimiento a un niño que hace que 12 años pues lo he traído en el programa y es un niño para mí ejemplar porque él es el coordinador de básquetbol y esto me llena a mí de satisfacción porque lo he tenido durante 12 años. Eric Dorame. Um, first of all, I want to say congratulations to Tool School for breaking the Kennedy tradition of winning the championship. Good luck. Um, <laughs> um, I hope that this tournament, I just hope that it can get bigger every year. Every year I see improvement in the tournament. I see more participation and I really hope that the kids The fourth graders, fourth, fifth graders, I hope that you guys come back for next year. And I want to make this a more official tournament with the city involved. And I just hope that basketball gets bigger here in Calexico because this is all about Calexico Bulldogs in the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, since I was young, this has always been my, my dream to be able to have a school's tournament since I, when I was young, uh, there wasn't a school's tournament. So this has always been my dream. And I want to give thanks to Mrs. Estrada for making it possible and Calexico Pal. That's it. 
Y por último, para una niña que la vi nacer, que es mi hija, que también está involucrada en básquetbol, que es Penélope Estrada. Um, well, I'm pretty much speechless, but, um, well, thanks for the kids, you know, that they're willing to, you know, like, I don't know what to say, but anyways, like, me and Eddie, we're going to work doing, you know, help the kids doing something else instead of being, you know, in the streets, whatever. But I'm gonna work with the girls because we don't see girls. So he's gonna work with the guys and I'm gonna work with the girls. So thanks. Pues, por último, quiero también darle las gracias de nuevo a todos los del concilio. Y Mr. Carrillo, gracias porque lo miré que estaba totalmente ahí con nosotros y es lo que yo necesito que esté apoyándonos. Muchas gracias, señor Moreno. Igual, creo que vamos a empezar un año mejor que este. And gracias. I want to thank you, Ms. Estrada, for doing, taking the leadership role and having these young men uh, out there on the basketball court learning the, the concepts of teamwork, of fair play, of athleticism, and looking forward to that when the core of this team gets to the high school that they're going to be champions on the basketball court, on the football field, and on the baseball diamond, on the soccer field, everywhere. And they've got to keep that in mind. And it starts with hard work, and it starts with hard work right now. Because this is where you build it, right here. This is the team building part of it. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Moreno, Mr. Dorme, Ms. Estrada, and everybody that was involved. We had a good time. And congratulations to School on dominating everybody else. You guys can have a seat now. Que pasen feliz Navidad y próspero año. Thank you. Okay, moving right along for the consent calendar we have, that's the next item of business. We have nine items on the consent calendar. If anybody wishes to pull an item, please do so now. Uh, Mayor, for me, the only one I have a question for is number five. Number five. And if nobody else will pull, I'll, I'll motion from one through four and six through nine. One through four, six through nine. There's a motion on the floor. Is it seconded? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hodge. All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number five, adopt resolution amending the city's conflict of interest code and resolution amending the redevelopment agency's conflict of interest code. Mr. Carrillo, I will defer that one to you. Okay. In essence, the Political Reform Act of California Government Code Section 87100 uh, requires that all agencies that make decisions that could materially affect economic interests to adopt a conflict of interest code for its employees. The conflict of interest code uh, will list the employees or the officers or officials who are required to file economic disclosure statements. By statutory law, the mayor, the city council, the city manager, the city attorney, the city treasurer, and planning commission members are required by April 1st to file a 700 economic in interest dis uh, disclosure. And as a result, those employees that have, are making governmental decisions such as appointment of personnel, purchasing decisions, entering into a contract on behalf of the agency, negotiating with other parties, or advising an agency on decision making with the intent of influencing 
agency decisions are also required to file this economic form, uh, disclosure form. And so basically through the redevelopment agency, we have new personnel, uh, the redevelopment agency director, the housing authority manager, et cetera. It's just updating the, uh, this resolution and ordinance. Excuse me. Okay. I guess that uh, would answer the question is, I didn't understand why it was coming before the council if the council already presents uh, these uh, 700 forms. No, this is for employees as well. I understand that. That's why I said you, I guess you answered the question. It, it's a, every, every two years the city's required to review and update their code and so we get a letter from the state saying you need to, to do this update by December 31st of this year and so that's why um, Erica LaQuesta as well as the department heads reviewed this and made any potential revisions to it. If there are no further questions, I'll motion for its approval. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, you skipped a portion there that I did have some comments on. Yes. Council member comments. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, yes. Okay. It's not okay. I just moved right into the consent. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, can we get to that at this point? <coughs> yes. Or do you want to... We can get, get to that this at this point. point. Okay, all right then. Well, general comments by city council, and then I'll start with Mr. Romero since he brought it up. <laughs> Where'd you go? Excuse me. That's it. Uh, as everybody knows, we've been, uh, as everybody is very much aware, we've been going through plenty of, uh, of, uh, of quakes. Uh, there's been some reports that we have had probably more so now than before the Easter Sunday earthquake. Uh, that being the case, uh, I would like to see where uh, the city updates its uh, emergency plan. Uh, back in April 2009, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Chief Mercado, you and I attended a workshop in the Palm Springs area. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was um, an emergency response workshop. Let me see here. It was the, uh, and during the workshop, it was clarified that the fire chief was the emergency management coordinator and the incident commander. Uh, I believe, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the quake when it happened on uh, Easter Sunday, it was more handled by general administration with the directors, with yes, with the directors. And uh, if anything, probably what takes priority, uh, what what should take priority, is uh, uh, safety and security, which falls under the fire department and the uh, and the police department. Uh, again, during that presentation, it was very made made very clear by the uh, instructor that the fire chiefs should assume that command with uh, obviously with support from uh, city administration including the rest of the directors. Uh, I would like to see where, uh, I don't know what the language is in, within the city of Calexico, uh, but I believe that, uh, uh, that the fire chief should be the one that should take uh, uh, the lead in these kind of situations. And with all the quakes that are happening, there's plenty of reports going out there that everybody's expecting another major quake in this area. So. Hopefully it'll happen later and not sooner, and so we will have plenty of time to, to uh, address that issue. So uh, who, who would uh, be reviewing and putting this thing together? Would be the fire, uh, fire chief along with the city manager and risk management. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, One of the things that uh, that we keep talking about are the expenses at every uh, at every council meeting, and we're dissecting uh, where the monies are being spent. But at the last council meeting, I made a comment about where maybe the city should should uh, 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 not go towards expenses in reviewing them and studying them, uh, but maybe more so towards revenue. One of the things that uh, that uh, that has come to has come to surface is that 
that one of the things that the finance director has said over and over again is comparison to this time period is the 2002 uh, revenues, correct? The crisis that we're going through right now. Three, I think it's all three. Oh, 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. I would like to see where there would be a public meeting, either a forum or as a matter of a council, with the city manager and the finance director, as well as all the department heads, including the fire and police chief, uh, use this, for example, that they sit here before the council and even before public. Um, every department is expecting, every department is planning on expenses, but nobody's planning on the revenues, in a sense. Because it seems like we're always arguing on how much you're spending and we're not covering how much you're making. The, uh, the, uh, using the 2002 or 2003 uh, revenue base, if, if, if there's some sense of assurance that, we're, that the city of Calexico is gonna receive that much revenues, why not set everybody here on the table, department heads and whatever, and say, okay, the base for any one department is, say, 750000 if not a million, and the rest of the monies that are left over, there's about nine departments. There's nine Eight. in the general fund? Eight. More or less? Eight. Then, okay, now you have an opportunity for each to argue how much they should be in each department. Now, you're gonna have the, the department heads from each one, including police and fire, saying, you know what, I have so many personnel, I need to have this much money to cover my, my uh, expenses, not only for personnel, but uh, for other expenses. And, and once the agreement is made on how much revenue a department's gonna receive, now the department can plan what its expenses are gonna be. And uh, this way, now you have a, a plan of saying, okay, we can't spend more than $2.5 million because that's all we're going to get and go, far, go at it at that end. Because right now it appears that we're getting these budgets and then we're seeing what kind of revenues come in, even though we may have a ballpark figure. But what's been the, uh, what's been the concept, what's been the mindset? Well, my budget is three million and I know I gotta save about 5% from that, so I'm gonna try it. No, let's, let's see if a, a figure can be set and <coughs> set it and then, work, and then uh, start working the budget from there. Um, other thing also, uh, first I, I want to extend my appreciation and congratulations to the city manager and his staff for finally, and I say finally because I had not seen it before, having the agenda emailed uh, with, with only a link. Uh, and then when in the agenda itself, you can click on those different items. Now, I don't know whose idea it was, uh, who implemented it. Uh, for what cause for this, uh, for this uh, uh, process to take place, but I cannot congratulate uh, uh, city manager and your staff enough for, for getting something so complex, making it so simple. And uh, uh, I went through the link and I went through every single, I went through every single item, and more in particular, the financial report for November had over 100 pages, and you had quick, easy access to it. Uh, it's a lot easier than what, it, what was being done before, where every item was emailed as an individual attachment. Uh, at the December 7th meeting, uh, Council Member Hodge uh, uh, requested uh, a, or suggested, recommended, requested for the event's final st uh, financial statement. Uh, it's not in today's agenda, so I just wonder what happened to that financial report. Obviously, if it, if it was through a private entity, that's not our business. If it's through one of the agencies that the city is working with, uh, with finances, then I believe the city should receive some kind of financial report on it. Um, are you referring to the, rock the, the basic? Oh, rock the border. Rock the border. Request okay. a rock the, uh, financial statement Correct. rock the border. Right. At the December 7th meeting, I also motion for the approval to work with Select Electric until it is confirmed that a business license is in force. Is it in force or are we still looking into that? So 
Elect Electric has had a business license, and I believe it's for the last three years. There is another firm that was on the last agenda that did not have a business license. However, I think he's in the process of getting one right at this moment, and Luis Estrada could answer that. That was uh, C.Y. Yes. Young. C.Y. Young, they're in the process for so the new, For the New River Consulting. Okay, so the no agreement has been signed yet, correct? Because remember, it was contingent that uh, nothing was signed until the business license was in file. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. That's all. And the business license will be taken care of already, right? Before it's <coughs> <before it's coughs> Okay. Moving, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Castro. No, I have no comments. Uh, Councilman Hodge. Yes, two. Uh, within a week, I, I read a, an editorial, I believe it was Mr. Albanias's editorial in the Ivy Press. Voice of the People, um, he was strongly saying that he really believed that a serious accident was waiting to happen, and he was referring to students. John, you know about this, right? We see it all the time at the high school crossing, jaywalking between Encinas and Andrade across 98 to get the jack-in-the-box. Uh, anyone in the audience or city, uh, city manager, what, what can we really seriously do about this in minimizing or, or eliminating this well, serious it's a potential it's a, it's, problem or tragedy? It's a, it's a public safety issue. We have a state route, safe, safe routes to school program on, with grants on Highway 98 with Caltrans. But this is where the police department can be there during the, the lunch hour, or when, what is it, 1218 to 105? Yes, 1218 about to about 110. To make sure they either cross at the crosswalk on, we, on 98 and Encinas, and, or at 98 and Andrade, instead of crossing in between and playing dodgeball mm -hmm. with, a, with a motorist. I've seen it happen, medium. it's very dangerous. But the other thing too is we had that we had an issue similar to that um, last year at uh, Camarena uh, Junior High with students not utilizing the crosswalk and they had educational handouts. The school, the administration sent that out. They had uh, what do you, an assembly with the students to advise them where they were to cross. But we can we can have a police unit out there. Well, city manager, you you remind me of a, of another point. I. I met a citizen, uh, food for lesson. And she turned around and she says that she lives across from Kiki, uh, the junior high, and she had a couple of issues. She said, why isn't there any sidewalk on the side of the junior high? And then I haven't been there, so I, I don't exactly know what she's talking about, but, but her, on the corner of 98 in, in the street that Kiki is on, there's this large lot. And the way she described it was a sort of hilly, and she says, children walk across that lot, but she has seen a border patrol go racing on that lot. And so very, very concerned that they may not see the children walking and, and, and again an accident in the waiting. The way the city map is laid out, the boundaries, Rivera from 98 to 2nd Street is the eastern boundary for the city. Camarena Middle School is in the county, well, okay. all that area, the CM Ranch, was to be annexed into the city, but because of delays and what have you and disagreements between the owners of the property and, and, and other issues, they never did get annexed, so it's county. That's why there isn't a sidewalk on the east side of Rivera. The west side of Rivera, where the McMillan housing development is, and the other housing developments all the way down to First Street, or Second Street, excuse me, that city, and that does have sidewalks. So this, this could be where newly elected Renaissance supervisor could maybe take the lead for us? Can, well, can the we thing do anything on this? It's in the county. The property owner, the Sycon family, would have to file an application with LAFCO to get it reconsidered to be annexed into the city. Mm. of Calexico. That's the only way we could solve the problem. Well, that, that would be the beginning. Okay. Unless we can get the county to, and utilizing Mr. Renison, who will be the District 1 supervisor after January 3rd, to push for uh, financing to provide uh, sidewalk. a sidewalk there. 
curbs and gutters. Take care of that lot where the kids are crossing or walking on. Uh, we'll go ahead and look into that issue at uh, Jack in the Box uh, 98 Please. in Linus Park. I'll get my SROs out there, but we are going to have to do some uh, cooperation with the school district to try to get an education out uh, regarding the, the you know them crossing the street and that the fact that they they can get cited for uh, jaywalking. That's that's another thing. That well, we'll they should be educated on that, but I think I think it's better you'll stop them if you're the, out there. That's. Well, give well them, you the, know. the whole thing is we will go out there, but right. I mean, if they don't put a notice, I mean, the, the, these kids aren't, you know. Right. The parents also need to know. And Correct. Is, is, you know, piggybacking on what uh, Mr. Hodge said, uh, perhaps a truck route is they're coming. We've got some major semis coming there pretty fast down that it, highway. In, in, and there's no way of diverting that traffic at this point? No. So that truck route goes right by two schools. It's a three state, schools. It's a state, it's highway. state highway. All right, Sergeant, <laughs> since you're up there, I, I have another issue, and maybe you can answer okay. it's been brought to my attention that uh, if this is true or not most or all black and white police cars do not have spare tires in their trunk and and then when they get a flat they have to call towing which is 150 more or less that was an issue that we had and it was addressed and we do have spare tires in the vehicles but are they in the the vehicle they're in we the have vehicles? some of the vehicles and we have uh, some at the police department too so it's not true it was true. We didn't have, there were some vehicles that didn't have tires. But now they do. They do. So we don't have to spend 150 for towing. No, we don't. Okay. Spare tires? Police officers? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Uh, Mr. What? Castro had a question for, Ms. for Lieutenant Gerardo. Oh, yes. Um, I, I passed uh, to uh, First Street on the area of downtown in uh, this uh, Saturday and Sunday, and I didn't see no, no one take care of the pedestrian uh, people. Uh, oh, traffic control? Who, yeah, traffic control. Who is in charge of that? I, I am in charge of that. We did yeah. have a, tra a traffic controller there, and sure. what happened is we had to use them From this Saturday and Sunday for the, the, uh, the, uh, the traffic downtown. From but there is somebody there. Starting From Monday, I made sure there was somebody there. From what time to what 11 time? 11 to, to 8 to 6 to 8 p.m. It depends. If, if he doesn't see that much pedestrian traffic, mm -hmm. he'll go back and go back to the Pro Avenue and, tra and do the traffic control down the Pro Avenue. So that's the reason I, I didn't see no one? Yes. I, I saw them. They were standing in the back because I guess the traffic was kind of slow, but they were there. I saw them in, in the orange. Uh, Saturday and Sunday? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. oh, and then about, about noon and 1 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Now I know. Thank you. Council Murtado. We had a, an additional item for the change in the uh, canceling the regular meeting of January the 4th. Can mm -hmm. we talk about that? Uh, can we talk about that? Canceling the 4th, January 4th, and moving it to the either the 11th or the regular 18th? Yeah, if, yes, if you, wanna, if you wanna take that item up now, kind of out of order of the regular agenda, you can do that. It's just it's wanna so forget that since we need a schedule, because when we're approving the uh, agenda, we're also approving this one here. Right. But it's a number one once more one more time. Okay, so go ahead and read it. What does it say? Uh, it it oh, says, uh, uh, under business, general fund department's request. Okay. Let's close this one and then go bring that. But can we right. do that? Can we close this? General public comments, anything else? Just want to make sure not to forget that. And also, I know that we just talked, um, City Manager Carrillo, with regard to the RFP for the consultant um, to uh, analyze our reorganization needs. So I just want to make sure that if we can have that something to talk about for next uh, meeting. And then the other, um, I think that's it. Okay. okay. Well, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, a great holiday. Spend time with your family, uh, with your loved ones, with your friends, and uh, enjoy the time off, the weekend off. Uh, God knows that uh, it's been a rough year. I was talking to uh, Lieutenant Gerardo. He says it's been a rough year for, for a lot of us, but uh, I guess the struggle will make you stronger. So keep on struggling. Anyway, so happy holidays to everybody, and uh, enjoy the time. Uh, moving right along. We have that item from Ms. Hurtado, which was the moving of the City Council meeting from January 4th to January either 11th or the 18th. Um, we wanted to move the, the budget information to the 11th and then the regular City Council, or move the budget it. Budget okay. our budget Our budget, our budget issue meeting that we have, on, that we've been having on a regular basis. 
<laughs> You're checking out item. Oh. And now we can is that is that how we wanted to work it, or do you want to just? Well, that's, that's in essence, we have we're going to have skeleton crews and personnel in, a, in the different departments the week between uh, Christmas and New Year's, as we have as people are taking their vacation, as you talk about spending time with their family, and so to get the agendas ready for January fourth uh, is is going to be very difficult and to do any of the inf backup information or research for that time. So typically city councils, the board of supervisors that meet go dark either the last two weeks of December or the last week of December and the first week of January. And then they resume the second or third week. Uh, we would be able to provide the information to you for our regularly scheduled second meeting of the month, January 18th, a Tuesday, but as you brought up, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the past practice for the last uh, month and a half or two months, uh, based on the request by Mayor Pro Tem Castro, is to have a separate meeting for the financials, uh, the, the monthly report, the overtime reports, et cetera, so that we can just dedicate our time to that. So if this council or Mr. Castro uh, is wanting to continue that, trend for January 11th, we could move items 17, 18, or we can do it, the overtime report and the November for tonight. No, we can move uh, item 17 and 16, right? For, right. Uh, for January. For a, special, for a special meeting. For January 11th. If the other council decide that, I agree on that. I mean, but remember, number 16 and 17. Right. Both. Over time, over and time, financial over. report. Correct for the month of uh, November. So, no, we've, been, we've been practicing that. I think we should just the uh, the second meeting could be donated to that. So. Okay, so it'll be January 11th. Is that okay with everybody? Yes, yeah. but I would also suggest that we also add item 18, which is the uh, investment report for that meeting as well. Oh, okay. Item 18. 16, 17, and 18. Special okay, so 16, 17, and 18 will be moved to January 11th, 2011. That's 1111, the date, just in case anybody's out there interested. <laughs> and so council will, be, council will be taking action to cancel the January 4th, right. 2011 regular meeting. Right, okay. and so we're having a special on the 11th and then the 18th. And the regular meeting on the 18th. Okay. Okay, moving right along. Um, thank you, Ms. Hurtado, for bringing that up and being the watchful eye. Moving on to item number 10, which is the business section. Adopt a, res a resolution supporting and approving the expansion for the Calexico County Enterprise Zone. And I believe we have uh, Mr. Daniel Fitzgerald taking the podium. Yes, Daniel Fitzgerald, manager of Calexico County Enterprise Zone. Um, the item before you is actually a continuation of an item of a resolution that was passed by this council in August of this year. Um, earlier this year, Ormat Corporation came to the, the, the Enterprise Zone to request an expansion for their Dogwood facilities as well as their Or Mesa facilities. However, um, upon later, much later investigation, apparently there are multiple parcels out at the Or Mesa facility, and so these are four additional parcels. Um, the, the original acreage that was requested at the beginning still is the same quantity, um, so that's basically the same. The, the these enterprise zone expansions are a natural evolution of an enterprise zone. By statute, they're allowed to increase their acreage over their 15 years by 15%. Uh, this is still just the second expansion, and we still have well over 2,000 acres to be able to expand. And so this is to, to include those existing power producing facilities that are out um, in the Or Mesa area. For ORMAT, this is going to allow them to be able to save a lot of money in terms of sales tax and tax credits, as well as hiring credits, which will allow them to be able to hire additional people um, here in, in the Imperial Valley. So, if there's any questions. Any questions for Mr. Fitzgerald? So, this is a continuation. Right, this is just basically part two of what we've what done in August. Mr. Fitzgerald. You mentioned a little while ago, as well as it stated in your presentation, that the uh, that the enterprise zone can be expanded up to 50% while in effect. Correct. We've already had some expansion. How much uh, expansion have we had? 
We had 60 acres. That was the ore mat. That was and the two dogwood based, facilities and one of the ones at the ore mesa. And based on the percentages that you referred to, what impact is that? It was 60 acres out of about 2,000. So 5% maybe, 3%. Okay, and the uh, the addition that you're that is being requested for here today is, is how much more? An additional forty four acres. So it's still going to remain less than five percent. Correct, of the total area that we're able to expand. Now, one of the things that I noticed that the area is referred to Hobel. That's its yeah. that's its address, correct? Right. But it's in the county. Technically, right. it's on. BLM land, if you want to be really right. technical. Just like the port of entry is referred to Calexico, but it's part of the county. Correct. Um, uh, what, uh, anything happens there if City of Hopeville one day decides to annex that acreage? That would be something that they would have to go through the process through LAFCO and be able to annex it, and it doesn't affect the enterprise zone designation so or the, the other. So the enterprise zone would be inside the City of Hopeville? Correct. Okay. That's happened numerous times. For example, a recent one was the, the Oakland Enterprise Zone expanded into the city of Berkeley. I have no more questions. Thank you. Uh, on the second page, under a heading jobs and salaries, I just need clarification. It, it's quoted, oh, Ormont's expansion plans are generally based upon the rate of return of facility. Do the amount of sales tax credits likely be generated due to Ormont's capital intensive business? This would allow the company to continue to expand the Calexico facilities. Is that in Calexico? Is that in the future? Or well, that, if anything, that'd be a typo. That'd be the Imperial County facilities. That would be referring to the ones that would be within the Enterprise Zone. So specifically, they'd be able to expand the facilities, such as the ones that are on Pitzer Road, the ones that are on Dogwood, or the ones out at the Ore Mesa. Not in Calexico. They don't have any within the city. So. Okay. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Is there out there a motion to approve? I'll motion to approve. Moved by Councilman Romero. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Councilman Hurtado. All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 11 was pulled. Item 12, consider adoption of an ordinance adding chapter 15.24 fireworks to the Calexico Municipal Code related to the regulation of fireworks. Mr. Mayor and City Council, this is to regulate the use and discharge and sale of fireworks that's uh, required in this resolution to protect the health and safety of its, uh, of its residents. The ordinance will require a permit to conduct a public display of fireworks and to sell safe and sane fireworks. Uh, there are some criteria that uh, is listed there in your backup information where a maximum of five permits may be issued by the city council. There's one stand is allowed for each permit. The sale is allowed for eight days that will commence June 28th and conclude on July 5th. Only nonprofits will be allowed to apply for and have issued a permit to sell safe and sane fireworks. Um, and so this is before the city council to approve and, and uh, so that we can continue moving forward. I believe if this ordinance is passed that uh, the filing for applications will be the month of March, March 1st and end March 31st. There's a criteria that they have to follow uh, and conditions of being a Calexico based nonprofit and uh, whether it's to serve the youth, educational, scholarships, what have you, service clubs, youth organizations, the cheerleaders, Pop Warner, et cetera. And uh, then at the conclusion of March 31, after we've had the applicants, uh, we'll present that to the city council to determine which of up to five get those permits. In the meantime, the fire department and the planning and development department will be looking at certain locations along different arteries in Calexico, along Highway 98, along Coal Road, and, uh, and any other venues where they think uh, they'll be accessible, safe to arrive to, and, and make your purchases. Okay. Any questions? I don't know if uh, Fire Chief Mercado wants to add anything, or if you have any questions for the Fire Chief.
Good evening, um, Peter McCullough, the Fire Chief. Um, just want to say that we had uh, considerable time in putting this ordinance together, uh, worked with uh, the law officers of uh, the city attorney and make sure that there was plenty of language in there that provided the safeguards for the city um, regarding liability and regarding uh, regulations that we're going to have with the nonprofits. Um, it's, it's a very technical process uh, in, in a sense, but a very thorough process. Um, because there will be a lot of competition behind uh, receiving up to those five permits. Uh, so it's going to be a, a very, very systematic way, hopefully, that we'll um, proceed with the application and the permitting process. So hopefully it'll be um, extremely fair and, um, and we can make this um, a win-win effort. What, uh, what, what, uh, why five permits? Was that a, just a I believe it's uh, just population? oversaturation of the market. I mean, there's going to be uh, five vendors. Uh, the city, even when the, the county allowed for the sale of permits, there was, I think, only three in Calexico. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's very restrictive. Um, it, it, I don't know what what will do the market. Um, I know that there is a tremendous amount of money that these nonprofits will make in a very short period of time, uh, enough so that they will sustain their nonprofits throughout their entire year. Uh, so it, it's, it's very, I don't know if you had a chance to review the ordinance, but the language in there is very specific. Um, <coughs> my idea behind it is that we will try to develop a website uh, or a link on our website where we can actually have all these forms available. Because I think if it is a uh, first come, first serve basis, uh, I believe on May, March 1st when this thing opens up, you're going to have people lined up uh, to try to take advantage of this. Because uh, it's, it's going to be very profitable to their organization. Um, and we'll see what type of effects it will have on our community. It, okay, it's, it, that's understandable. It's going to be profitable for them, and it says here fiscal impact, but there will be a minimal revenue generation as a result of the fire department permit per applicant for the city, so we're not going to get much. Is that, do I read this right? Or? Um, yeah, you could, you could probably extrapolate that, but um, I'll be upfront with the honest uh, with the uh, permit fees. The permit fees for each applicant is $1,000. It's one thousand and one dollars, and that that fee is generated through the um, the maximum study fee um, based upon uh, the amount of time that we're going to be putting into the um, permitting process, the inspections, the enforcement, um, and it's really uh, tremendously minimal to the amount of money that they will be making. So it may seem steep, a thousand and one dollars, but realistically, if we deny that, uh, there'll be fifteen or twenty people standing in line right behind them to take advantage of this. Because uh, we're talking, there's a substantial amount of money that each organization could potentially make. Is, is there any additional cost on the city's part for uh, most doing definitely? This? Well, because during the the eight day period that you're able to purchase and discharge and enjoy these fireworks, is that there's enforcement, constant enforcement issues, both with police department, city services, fire department, uh, EMS, emergency medical services. So it's an ongoing process. That eight day period where uh, we're either checking for permits with inspections, we're making sure that adults are at the displays, that there's no alcohol, that, that they're being sold appropriately. So there's a lot of enforcement issues that involved with the permit process. Do, do we lose, I mean, I think it's very good that we're doing this for various reasons, but does the city lose money in this venture? Well, we haven't done this for years. So okay. we can't speculate. I mean, the idea is that if you have five, up to five vendors, that they have the potential to make 5,000 to 20,000 each, depending on how, in those eight days, how many residents are but still here. But remember, maybe I'm missing something they do. Do we get something from them? Well, they'll be required, uh, as you look back in, the, in the back information, to have a temporary sales permit, and we're gonna get that financial report for them in September. Okay, that's to, true. And uh, so there'll be some sales tax. Okay. They'll have to report their sales tax. Okay. What, one of the things that's really good about this ordinance that I, that I really liked is that um, we, we've established certain safeguards for the city and one of them is that they're reporting what they're selling in dollar figures for gross receipts. Uh, they're required to submit a report prior to applying for a subsequent year application. Um, and this, this also requires that both the police and fire department set up emergency action plans during this eight day period we're going to be selling and also provide council a report on all the expenses that were incurred as a result of the fireworks. Some years it could be nothing, other years it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage as a result of per se a, a house fire. 
So it, it's, it's important that it's in there so would you guys are made aware if this is a project that you guys will continue to want to uh, allow. What about business licenses? Are we going to be requiring business licenses? It's, it's in, included in this with, uh, as well. Yeah. You're required to have a business license, so show your proof of nonprofit status along with your tax exempt. It, it goes very thorough in there. Uh, Mr. Hodge, if I may, you bring up some very good points as far as what would be the cost incurred. What initiated the, the, prohib the prohibiting or banning of sale of fireworks in the county was that prior to it, that ordinance, that ban being implemented, the agricultural industry lost hundreds of thousands of dollars to haystacks, bills of hay being burned by sparklers or errant fireworks. And they flooded the chambers of the Board of Supervisors to request the ordinance being countywide. And at the time, the, the only city that didn't adopt it or support it was Calipatria. And so now Calexico is the second city that at the south end of Imperial County that will be implementing this if you support this measure. <coughs> and one, one of the biggest things though that, that once again that the ordinance was pretty thorough in that um, these nonprofits are, are generating money and they have to um, be explicit as to how they will be spending the profits gained out of this. So and for one thing I would think maybe a a cancer society wants to come in and Calexico nonprofit and say this money's going to be used to educate, to help, to do whatever. Those are, are very, um, very good reasons to to have something like this, and they're allowable. Youth sports, so on and so on. So, it, it's it has its benefits, but it also has its drawbacks. But the drawbacks we are completely unaware of right now because we haven't experienced this. Okay. You have uh, Laura Brunel from TNT would like to come and say a few words. TNT. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, and members of staff. Um, my name is Laura Brunel. I, um, for the record, um, I'm with TNT, Com TNT Fireworks, and our address is 555 North Gilbert Street in Fullerton, California. I'm an area manager for TNT Fireworks uh, in Southern California, so Calexico will be part of my territory. Um, I work with other nonprofits in um, in the Imperial County, Calpatria being one of them. Um, part of my responsibility will be working with the nonprofit organizations, the property owners, and the city to secure uh, the required permits, right orders, oversee training, um, deliveries, and returning of the fireworks. Um, I am here this evening on behalf of our Vice President, John Kelly. He is ill and um, apologizes for not being here, but um, he, he's sorry he could not attend. Um, he spoke before you about this issue last time. It was on the agenda. Both he and Dennis Ravel have had uh, the opportunity to review the ordinance and asked me to appear before you this evening. TNT is in full support of the ordinance as presented. We're excited to work with the city and its nonprofit organizations who will benefit from this program during the 4th of July. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer them to the best of my ability, and I can al also contact John if I don't know the answer. <laughs> so um, I thank you for your time, and we appreciate you, um, you know, considering this. It's a great fundraiser, so, and it'll benefit the city. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brunel. Any questions? Nope. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just have to make two, um, I just want to make clear that we have the correct version of the ordinance before the council, if the council is going to consider adopting it. Um, I believe Erica LaQuesta had sent out a revised version of the ordinance last night to the council. And essentially, the, the one change is that under section 15.24.080B2, it references two subsections. Um, it references subsections N and R. Those should be replaced with subsections O and S. So <coughs> that will be if the council motions for the uh, introduction <coughs> and waiver of the full reading of the ordinance tonight, those corrections will be reflected in the ordinance. Okay. Very good. 
Uh, Mayor, before we go through any motions, uh, I know we have one member of the committee here. Yes, you, Mr. Davis. <clears throat> Is there any thing that you can share for? I think that's the next thing on the agenda. Isn't it? <coughs> well, I thought we're on it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I jumped. <laughs> I was trying to see how come this didn't make any sense. <laughs> All right. So move. Do you stand corrected? I stand corrected. Now you move? I move. To approve? To approve. Second. <laughs> and this is for the fireworks. All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. And I believe you have to read it by title, right? I do. It's an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Calexico, California, adding Chapter 15.24 <coughs> fireworks to the Calexico Municipal Code related to the regulation of fireworks. And then it will be back for adoption on January 18th, 2011. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Moving on to item 13. Yes. Yes, that was. It's uh, discuss or take action in regards to the Measure H General Tax <laughs> Citizen Oversight Advisory Committee's ability to receive and respond to the public as requested of Michael Davies on uh, behalf of Measure H, H Oversight Advisory Committee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Davies, Vice Chairman, Measure H Tax Oversight Committee. Thank you, Mr. Romero. And <laughs> The last. Um, basically, I appear for you, before you guys tonight uh, in regards to um, while at our last meeting, going through our bylaws or our prospective bylaws, um, we noticed that Section 2.2 limited our authority as far as communicating with the public in regards to information, details and also receiving information from the public um, in regards to the, the tax measure. And I'm here basically to ask the council if, if you can maybe be a little bit more flexible on that rule, that particular rule 2.2, .2, so we are more free to discuss bring in information from the city, I mean, uh, from citizens in the city, get a better idea of what they're thinking about, where they want the money to go, and just, just basically to open up a little bit more communication and, and not having to always go directly through the council when communicating with the citizenry. So you would like to, to go out a little more to the community well, and, and actually, get well, feedback we're, from them, right? What we've been exploring is, is more like a lot of you are familiar with uh, different social mediums that we can use, um, be it uh, email, uh, one email address that we could all share where people with concerns could email us and we'd all get a copy of it. There's the, the, a website, Facebook, whatever it is, you know, nothing that will be any fiscal impact as far as costing the city any money. Stuff that's already there that we could set up in one day. And uh, that way we could we want to be completely, absolutely transparent on this money uh, because we, we understand that there's a lot of people that are going to be very interested in where it goes. So we want to get input, info, info from everybody, not just particular groups or anything, just from the citizenry, the people, people that voted it in. The people voted on it and they right. have a right to know. Exactly. And we need their input. So what we need for the council to do is basically give us a little bit more flexibility on that section, that 2.2 section, so we are able to do some of the footwork in order so we can uh, come back to you folks with uh, better recommendations. I have a curious Mr. question. In your meetings that you've held, uh, how many people are actually the public? How many are, are in attendance? Uh, including us? Uh, nobody. No one? Yes. That's just staff? Yeah, well, other than staff. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mayor, may I, ask, may I ask Mr. Davies a question? Um, so, would you essentially just want to remove the one se se sentence that says the committee shall not have the authority to communicate, communicate externally on behalf of the city of Calexico and all communications by the committee shall by, be to and through the city council? If we just remove that I, I think that, that would suffice, probably, okay. yeah. And, 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 and Otherwise, you're happy with section 2.2? .2? Right. Okay. Right. And just give us a little bit more flexibility. Sure. So we can do a little bit more work on it. It would help us a lot, a lot. So eliminating there's no authority. 
Just no, not the no authority section. Because Essentially, this, this committee is still an advisory committee. That's the way they were set up through the tax um, measure that the citizens voted on. So I think you can leave section 2.2 .2 as is, um, except for just remove that one sentence. I think it is, it shall read, so it'll read, the committee shall serve in an advisory capacity to the city council. It shall have no independent duties and no authority to take actions that bind the city of Calexico, which is true because they're advisory. We'll remove the sentence that say that says they shall not have the authority to communicate externally on behalf of the city. So just remove that sentence. And then the next sentence, no expenditures or requisitions shall be made by the committee um, and no member shall be entitled to reimbursement for travel or other expenses as, except as authorized by the city council. You can leave that sentence in too. So it's just the sentence that concerns them. It's a limitation them. on communication right. is, it, is, is the only thing we had a problem with. <coughs> So you, I think you can remove that sentence and um, capture what the committee wants, as well as keeping them an advisory committee, which is the way the ballot measure read. Okay. So I hope you all take that into consideration. Yes. And this is for action. Oh, it's action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is well, the committee going to submit the revised bylaws then to the council for approval, or? I think we were pending on okay. the decision here tonight. Okay. If, if there will be. So, so is it more of a direction or is it It's a direction and then the, the final, if, if that sec sentence is removed, then the final version can come to back to the council on January 18th, I mm -hmm. suppose, mm -hmm. for just adoption of their bylaws. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any uh, motions? Well, motion to direct. Okay. Motion to direct. Motion to direct. We'll, we'll revise uh, that particular part of the uh, bylaws. So there's a motion by... Councilman Romero, is there a second? Sec S S she beat you to it. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Castro, all those in favor respond by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck, Mr. Davies. Um, moving on to item uh, 14, which is the appoint replacements to the Financial Advisory Board. City Council is requested to take the following action appoint replacements to fill the vacant seats on the Financial <coughs> Advisory Board. Do we have anyone that would like to appoint anyone at this point? How many points on? Do you have someone? Yes. Who? I would like to appoint uh, Mr. Carlton Hargrave. Mr. Carlton Hargrave. That would be Romero Carlton Hargrave. Okay, Mr. Castro, who did you? Yes, I, I would like to appoint uh, Oscar Gonzalez. Oscar Gonzalez. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilman Hurtado. I'm not, I'm not ready. You're not ready? Okay. All right. I, at this point, do not have an appointment, uh, but I will get one at the next meeting. And Mr. Hodge, uh, did he have an appointment? Does anybody know? I don't. Well, we'll wait for him to come back. And they will be basically assisting us um, with budget issues, et cetera, just like they were in the past. Ah, there's Mr. Hodge. Is there an appointment that you may have for the Financial Advisory Board at this time? Not at this time. Okay, so three of us will have to appoint at the next meeting, which will be one, January 11th. January 18th. 18th, I'm sorry. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, did, you have, did you have something to say on item 14? Thank you very much. Appointments to the Dangerous Building Abatement Board. Um... Make three appointments to the board. We have Javier Diaz, Raul Martinez, Bob Williams. I think they're all excellent. So I okay. Can, can someone share some a little more background on them? You want to share on? Uh, I don't know. Mr. Raul Martinez works for the Calexico Unified School District's maintenance operations, school building, and facilities. Um, Mr. Diaz is an architect. He's uh, been in business for quite some time. And Bob Williams was a building official here in the city of Calexico for many years. And specifically, again, what makes them qualified? 
Any yeah, they're in the yeah they're in, in the business building, construction design construction design, design etc. So we've got a good crew of, of three people. And I think uh, I think it would be who is the first person? Raúl Martínez. Raúl Martínez. Uh huh. He's the maintenance operation director, supervisor, and he's done a lot of work. Uh, and I think he's currently taking some classes. If I'm not mistaken, I did speak to him about this particular position. So. So we have two here. Is that three, correct? Three. The third one, uh, Bob oh. Williams. You're right. Sorry. Bob Williams is a former building official here in Calexico. He's currently the building official in El Centro. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve these three gentlemen? So moved. So moved. moved by Romero, seconded by Second. Hurtado. All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carries. Item 16, I believe was pulled. Yes. Item 17. Is pulled. I believe was pulled. Item 18 pulled. was also oh. pulled. For the January 11th meeting. <coughs> Moving on to item 19, which is the acknowledged receipt of the Special Financing Authority for the 6th of October 2010. Any questions? Yep. Acknowledge. Acknowledge receipt. Which one is 18? I'm looking at number 19. Oh, 18 is also full? Yes. Okay. Acknowledge. Okay. Item 20. Acknowledge receipt for the meeting of 26th day of October. Acknowledge. Acknowledge number 21 for the third day of November 2010. <coughs> Also no. acknowledged by Mr. Romero. Anybody else? Okay, and then we're going to utility services department now, which is item 22 on the business enterprise fund department. Installation of a 24 inch water line on Sunset Boulevard. We have a Sunset Boulevard in town? Adjacent to the town center portico industrial development project. Mr. Estrada. Yes, uh, in front of you, uh, in, in the counter, I left a uh, Aerial color plan right. on the uh, on the area that we were talking about. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many uh, feet of it, but we're requesting uh, this this particular project was uh, uh, included on the bidding project that uh, for the portico on the EDA grant. This project uh, does not uh, is not funded by EDA. This will be funded by uh, water funds either a portion by uh, the cash balance and the other one would be from uh, uh, impact fees. That's 181,000. At this time, we're just requesting the, that the council authorize the, the, uh, the award of the contract to Hazard. I'll be coming back uh, with the uh, budget am amendment in the next meeting. Okay. Not a budget amendment, a budget. Well, okay, well, the budget. It will be included in the, in the new budget. Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. Mr. Estrada, this is not to frustrate you, but I, I strongly urge that we move that we table this item. Uh, personally, I'm, and it's not so much this particular issue about the water line, but, but that's all integrated and part of the town uh, center development. Uh, I'm just not comfortable with uh, voting on this tonight, uh, Council. I, I believe there are too many questions that need to be answered, and what I'm referring to specifically is, is uh, the companies that have promised jobs at the town center. Uh, I, I think it would be best in our best interest that we obtain more information uh, about the companies. And, and I don't want to have any problems with, with EDA, EDA, I think the EDI, Explicit Direct Instruction in School. Okay. Uh, I believe we just need more information, more tangible documentation on these companies. Uh, for instance, their track records, their financials. And furthermore, I, I believe it, it would be a good idea for the public to have the companies give public presentations uh, on, on their operations and types of jobs and positions. And also, uh, we, we need to make sure that the appropriate commissions are involved here. Um, I, I spoke to my appointee on the planning uh, 
commission and, and he wasn't aware of, of these companies. And so we need to all work together. Uh, so again, based on what I just said, I'm very concerned about this. Um, city attorney or city manager, I, I, ask, I ask this again. Are we financially responsible if these jobs don't come through or are we definitely off the hook at this point in time? Yeah, uh, if I may interject a little, uh, Councilman Hodge, I did, it, I, do it, I, blah, I did do an inquiry with uh, Mr. Estrada, and this is for future development that is not so much for it's that not, immediate area. The the, uh, the EDA grant has nothing to do with this project. Is it is it pertaining to the town center? Is that the correct no. well, project? It, it's, this is a transmission line. It's a 24-inch uh, water line. That so it's separate. Separate. The reason we want to uh, get it awarded so uh, in the future, if it's in a year or so, we don't have to cut the brand new street, which is Sunset, and then have a patch on the new, a brand new street. We won't like to take advantage of it before they, they do any of the work on the street and, and pave it, uh, that we install this uh, transmission line. Uh, again, this transmission will go and will loop across the canal, Central Main, and in the future, when the uh, Jasper Corridor projects, you know, all those developments that are coming in on, on Jasper Corridor, they will be able to, uh, they will pay, they will reimburse this section and the rest of the section. Again, it's a transmission line. Uh, the Portico, the uh, town center already have their uh, water lines, and that's part of the uh, grant. Well, okay, but I still hold committed to the comments I just made, so. Uh, uh, Councilman Hodge, if, if you would like on the 18th for Town Center and Kevin Smith and D. Ratshaw here to comment on the project and the companies that are coming in and, and Richard Nault from MMG, uh, we can certainly try to get them here for the 18th. I it's think that would be a very good idea. I, I think the public has the right to know, but would, would they be the ones? I mean, wouldn't the companies themselves? Well, they, they are the... the 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 project managers are the leads for those, those for those companies, but but that, those projects have nothing to do with installation. Okay, the uh, I understand your point. Let, let me ask uh, Mr. Estrada. The has already been scheduled to do the pavement on uh, Sunset. They're going to start in uh, beginning of the year. So all, you know, all the improvements as part of the of the uh, of that project that was awarded in September twenty first. Uh, they'll, they'll commence in, uh, in a month or so, at the beginning so of the year. It will either, one, it'll delay the, the pavement of the area, or two, it will be done, but then we're going to have to dig up that pavement. Yes, and the other thing is that I've been holding the contractor to hold the same price, you know, and, you know, that was one of the, that's another thing, another issue. If I don't get it approved, you know, today, and, you know, I would have to ask them if they hold it again on the 18th. Um, Councilman Hodge, you know, regarding the companies, I have no, nothing to do with that. I, I don't, you know, I know that they turn in uh, certified letters. Letters of assurance. Letters well, that's, of, yes. That's a different project. Right. That's a different project. This is for the infrastructure for the, the for future plant. For, for future, future growth. Right. right. For future. What, what we don't like to see is that later, you know, in a year, casino comes in on the other projects, on Jasper come in, then we'd have to dig a hole on that, on that new pavement. Mm. Nick. Mr. Finley. Basically, basically it's, it's what Luis said. What we're trying to do is prevent, we're trying to be proactive instead of reactive on this issue. He, he needs to install that water line, get that water line installed for the future growth later on. And it can't fall under the EDA because the EDA does not allow that type of work. It only allows us to work under the scope of work for that project area. So that's why uh, Mr. Estrada needs to increase that size, and that's why the, he's bearing the cost for the future. And then what we'll do is we save ourselves in the long run because then he'll have to come in, tear up the streets that have just been paved, and the cost goes up higher. So we're trying to save some money and be proactive instead of reactive along with this. Okay. If that, that helps you any. Then yes, there's two separate issues. It doesn't right. fall under our EDA grant, town center. However, that line is going to go through, well, through that the, area. The language is there and was in the back of her narrative. That's why. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Finley. Well, then, Mr. Romero. Yes, uh, I'm going to ask the same question I'm going to ask always. Hazard Construction Company. Business license? Yes. They're currently doing a, another project at the airport. 
Okay. Um, the history with hazard construction. So, in some sense, it's in line with Councilman Hodge asked a little while ago. What is the history between the City of Calexico and Hazard Construction Company in regards to change orders? In regards to change orders. Uh, so far, I've only, the, my first project is, uh, has been at the airport with Hazard. And so far, we haven't had any change orders. I don't know if we've, you've done any job. We haven't done any other work. Okay, so for the job that's going to be done, you guys wouldn't anticipate a change order down the road. I mean, for this project. Mr. Romero, you know, we always anticipate no changes, but you never know. Well, the thing is, obviously, Mr. Estrada, is that on previous projects, we keep seeing change orders. And, you know, if, if the director uh, needs, uh, like, for example, this company to help out what needs to be planned out, then they themselves should be giving you any contingencies. Uh, so I'm only expecting that this proposal can, can also includes those contingencies. Um, just need to watch the change orders. That's it. Okay. Um, <coughs> regarding your, uh, what you're saying, um, Councilman Romero, um, I believe that uh, the city attorney need to work and put um, the, on the on the contract that uh, to specify spe specify the, the the language that uh, there's no change order because this this company come to Calexico and they make the box and most of the time they made the box with the city of Calexico. There's so many times that that I've been here in the council. I heard that. Uh, First of all, they, they open for bid these contracts. They, 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 they charge so much money, and at the end, either Nick or either Estrada come to, to us, and they ask for a chain order. So we, we need to, uh, um, city attorney, we need, we need you to work on those, those contracts, because um, either, either we open for, for, for bid, those contracts again, or, or either we we uh, we work on the on the on the contract. That uh, that's the language on that contract. It has to be very clear. There's no change of order because these people come to make the money, and um, I know it's a business, but we need to take care of the city of Calexico. Um, I I don't want to hear that because I hear so many times. There's so many change orders, and, and we need to uh, clarify that. So I don't know what you think about this, Jennifer, but you need to work on those contract, con contracts. Mayor Pro Tem, so, let, me, let me just clarify. One, when a project is bid, a public works project is bid, the contract is usually part of the bid package. So we can't make changes to that contract if we're going to accept the bid as it is proposed. I'm not aware what language is in this particular contract because it's not included in the backup material. So I doubt that this no change orders is part of the contract for this one. If you want me to advise staff that they need to try to include language like that on future bids, that can likely be done. Um, I don't know what the pattern and practice is with contractors if they're going to agree to a no change order um, clause in a contract just because you know, construction work, <coughs> digging underground, discovering issues, I mean, those kinds of things come up in any construction contract. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what comments Luis or what? Nick have on that, but that's, you know, like I said, I can put it into future contracts, but if the council's probably going to, if you're going to accept the bid as is, we have to use the contract that was part of the bid, con bid package. Um, I, the, the concern here, Mr. Estrada, is that uh, the lowest bid has been accepted. Change orders come in. It's no longer the lowest bid. Town center. Exactly. Uh -huh. You know, I've, I've always, ex you know, tried to explain what, what a change order, most of the change orders are, are, we're requesting the change order. The city's requesting. Like Jennifer just mentioned, for example, in this area, that's been a farmland for so many years. So hopefully there is no concrete blocks in the middle of the, where this pipe is going to go in. You know, and this is when, when we do projects like, for example, inside the water plant or inside the sewer plant that's been there for 100 years. And, and for example, you know, and you, and they're digging and they find something that 
Uh, there's no history. There was no history, and the design engineer never knew about it. We didn't tell them, or again, there's no history. So, you know, and the history goes from one plan to another plan, and, and if, if there's history, you know, it would be put there. Now, when you're digging, for example, the change orders, for example, we talked about the project on, uh, on uh, the raw water reservoir. As we were digging, we found out that the valves were, were shot. You know, we needed to replace them. Either you replace them now or you replace them later. You know, and when you, it's the holes there, you've got a contract, you take advantage of it. So it's not like the contractor is requesting for this change orders. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, we, we feel that it's a lot cheaper for doing changing it now than later. You know, it's like you take your car to a mechanic, you know, and, and, and the mechanic will start looking and he'll, he'll find. If it started with a tr uh, the starter, no doubt about pretty, it. Pretty, you, you know, pretty soon you, you, you're doing other things. You know, the, the regulator or something that he'll find that. But it, that but I understand. Anyway. But what happens is, and I'm saying history, for the two and a half years that I've been here, change order, change order. A mechanic will usually tell you, at one time you need to make these changes. Do I get your approval? After they're approved and they give you the extra fees, the extra charges, after you've done that, there isn't a, hey, oh, oh, by the way, I, forgot, I found this. And, and this is, if anything, I could, under, I, I could understand uh, the, the contingency where there may be one change order at the end, but not uh, during the project, that's something else. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may. But because of this, because of this project and the clock is taking with the pavement of sunset, and we're bringing this thing up. Um, my, my position right now is to prepare this for the future, not necessarily for this one. That's my position right now on this. Mr. Carrillo. I, uh, Councilman uh, Romero and Mayor Pro Tem Castro, you make an excellent point. He had asked Hazard Construction to hold off and keep the price to the original uh, RFP versus adding but we're going to look to see if there's a boilerplate document where if we're going to pay 289,000 to get the work done that's what we're going to request that they do for 289,000 sometimes you set aside 10 percent or 15 percent in contingency to uh, accommodate or account for a change order but let's use this one as the model and the pilot to see if they can do the work without any change orders and hold them to the work, the, the scope of work, and what the city will be paying for it. Okay. Anyway, the clock is ticking on this one, uh, Mayor. Uh, I would motion for its approval. There's item a, a only. Item A only, because item B was pulled. There's a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? I'd like to say something. Wait a minute. Before, wait a minute. Excuse I, me, sir. This I is. Think wait a minute. No, no. You, right hold on. Before. You gave me something on town center. Town center is not part no, no, of this but discussion. I talk about that. No, 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 no. no. I made it a was mistake. on town center. No, listen, I'm sorry. Mistake, We're having a motion on the floor. We're discussing right now. I want to discuss. That was well, what hold I wanted on. to talk hold about. Hold on, Mr. Romero made a motion. We're waiting for a second. Yeah, but before you approve, I'd like to say something. Well, you can't deny my First Amendment. You, you've got town center here. No, it's not on the agenda, sir. I could have put circuit. It's not on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Thank Listen, you. You're being a tyrant. No, and it's you're, not on your I'm following procedure. No, you're denying my first I'm amendment. I'm following procedure. It says no, town center. Town no. center is not on the agenda, I sir. I left that open. It says town center. I it's not said, in the agenda. We I, cannot I also discuss said Johnny it. Moore. Thank you. No, you're Mr. denying Romero, my first the, amendment. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Gerardo. Yes, sir. He's getting rather unruly. I don't think so. For expressing my first amendment? Okay. I wanted to respond to the attorney. We have a motion on the floor. I'm waiting for a second. It's gone back to the panel. I think the public has a right before The public you has a right. Yes, can they I do. Can I speak? You need to sit down, please. No, At this can point. I speak? No. You're denying my right. I'm sorry. Well, no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't apologize. Just, I'm, there's a motion. I'm following procedure here, Mr. Gonzalez, and that's all. Yeah, but I have the right to uh, But we, we've got a motion on the floor, and I've got to follow Robert Rules of Order. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hurtado, you had a comment. I kind of forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, with regard to, to this being considered as a, as a um, 
change order. No, no, this is not a change order. Right, that's what I agree, I agree with that. Okay. I don't believe it's a change order no. either. We shouldn't be calling it that. But um, as you said at the beginning of your, of your presentation on this issue is that this 24-inch this uh, pipe was already in the original bid. Bid, yes. Um, as far as I understand, it was in the original bid, bid as a smaller size. It, it, it's, okay, it's a uh, atom bid. You had the, the, your bid under the EDA project, mm -hmm. and then they put in another bid for this project, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, we didn't know if it was going to be approved or not, uh, and, and we wanted to know exactly how much money it was going to, so we checked the numbers, and 181000 is it's a pretty good price, and like I say, uh, uh, and then the issues of the town center came, so I was holding on that, I asked the contractor to hold the price, and uh, he is still holding the price, the, the 181. Because what, what we talked about was was that the fact that you'd like to place this larger uh, pipe in this project is for future. So in your in your meetings, the um, project review committee meetings, at what point did you decide, or who decided that that this would be a good idea for our, for the future uh, growth of Calexico? Because I think that what I would like to know is that at what point did we discover that, that then when all of this was uh, being planned out, we would have known this a while back. Um, okay, I would we, imagine that you must have discovered that. Um, we have a water and wastewater master plan, and it's part of the master plan to bring in. Co uh, currently we have the 24-inch water line comes on B.B. Williams, and it's uh, stepped up before it hits Coal Road, um, up to that section. Uh, in the section where uh, Camacho Street, or on the other side of, uh, on the east side of the railroad tracks, we also have a 24-inch in where it tees, and we, but in water you have, you, you need to, and this health department requires that, you have to loop the system. You can't have dead ends. So, as, like I say, it, looped, it, 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 it stopped out at uh, Vivian Williams before it, it, it gets to Coal Road. And what we want to do is bring this up to Coal Road from the north. And in the future, we need to connect under the railroad track. So that would be a different project. And hopefully, if the projects come in, uh, the uh, Jasper Corridor projects come in, they'll be reimbursing all these expenses. Again, this is a transmission line. We have transmission lines. 24-inch transmission lines. Uh, but the, you, the, the actual question I'm trying to ask you is, I would imagine that we discovered that this would be a great idea for our future a while back. Yes. And, and, we're, and we approved the EDA a while back as well. And here we are at this point having to make a decision to add something on that I would imagine you knew when we were um, discussing the area and all that growth back then. It, it's a little like... It, a little it's, in, it's in the same... Uh, bid document. We, okay. I'm, I'm bringing it at this time because there were issues regarding the grant. You know, and you, you for example, you, you did award in September 20 something, you awarded the contract to Hazard. And we were holding Hazard because, and you know, that's a city attorney will, will explain that you had already awarded the contract, but you couldn't get the project started because the issues of those letters. So why would I come back, you know, come in and add another award to the same contractor when I wasn't, you know, we weren't sure yet. I the believe other, we're already other, sure the letters are there and the project will start in a month. The other curious question that I have is that within that original um, proposal includes one, um, I don't even know the size, the previous size. And, and a bid and an amount is already included in a previous bid yeah, for that, that amount. That's already in, in part mm -hmm. of the... However, that, that size is not going to be in there. Now we're going to bring in another size. No, 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 no. You, that's what I'm saying. This is a transmission line. You don't connect uh, City Hall to that transmission line. You have to come out of the 18, 12 inch, 6, 8 inch. So we're not doing replacements of sizes. This is an additional... No, this is just a, a, a pipe they're going to put in 24 inch by 2,000 feet. Uh, stub it, stub it, pay the top, and in two years we can we will be able to use it, and hopefully, you know we'll do the loop on t on uh, Jasper. I'm sorry, it's just that I understood that we were replacing one smaller size, being that it wasn't necessarily planned for future growth at smaller size, and that we're bringing in a larger to be able to take care of any future growth. No, man, no. 
Okay, then I misunderstood. Only because my concern was is that if then that other size uh, uh, Life, uh -huh, was in the first bid and we're already then responsible to pay that amount, that if now we're only going to do a switch, which I thought it was a switch, oh, no. we're going to switch for another size that we weren't going to have them double dipping no, for two no, different. No, no, okay. not at all. So I just want to make sure. No. That's why it's I keep saying interesting future how and a transmission line. And I think what the concern is is that once we realize that something like that is 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 should be taken care of at the same time that we're doing some because that might be happening with other projects that are coming up is thinking about future growth is that we be knowing that information ahead of time and uh, and probably upon the committee's um, uh, discovery of that, those items as well because then we look at it as a change order and no one likes change orders obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, City Attorney uh, Lyons, Mr. Estrada just said that he had waited because of he wanted to make sure of the assurances of EDA. And uh, I'm, I'm learning here, I don't think it's enough that we, we take things uh, only on face value or verbally, and it's wonderful we're going to have the presentation. So my question to you is, is there anything uh, more tangible in documentation from the companies that will give us assurances that uh, they're going to hold to their promise that they're going to deliver on these jobs. I mean, something like a, a certified letter or, or some other kind. Uh, a notarization is. This is on the 24 inch pipeline. Right. I know, so but he, it's, I can. It's, it's I will time. address the EDA grant issues at a separate time, not. Okay. Um, you know, with respect to this item, because it's not on the agenda tonight. This would be a separate contract, city funds via either the water account or the development impact fee accounts will pay for this. This is like a separate contract outside of the EDA grant contract. So if council wants to act on this, because again, it's separate, it's a part, no funding from the EDA grant will be necessary for this contract or responsible under this contract. And then we can address the questions you have on the January 18th meeting. Okay. Any uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, Senor Estrada, you mentioned that uh, we are going to be able to use that line in two years. Yes, in the future. Yes. In the future? In the future, yes. Well, I'm saying, you know, when the casino comes in and Hopefully the, pro the rest of the projects on uh, Jasper Corridor, uh, uh, you know, start coming back. Uh, in fact, we, we have one project already interested in our meeting in, at the beginning of the year. And also you mentioned that uh, in January, um, are gonna, they, they, they're going to start fabbing that uh, Sunset Boulevard or when? Are you guys going to start that? Nick can answer. Yeah, construction is set up for the first the middle of January to start on that. It's actually actually already, it's already started. We already moved some of the electrical poles. The ID had to relocate some electrical poles along the Cole Road Boulevard area. So basically it started, however, the contract with Hazard, who's going to do the majority of the infrastructure, is set for January, first of January. So the first of the year they'll be getting started, and that's why we wanted to get this taken care of so everything can just coincide with each other. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to approve the 24-inch pipeline. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Is uh, all those in favor respond by saying aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Four to one, motion carries. And I believe we are mistaken. done. Uh, future agenda items can be now uh, set at this time. And uh, start with Mr. Romero. <laughs> Mr. Romero, you had asked for a general plan update and what have you on the 18th of building and planning will be presenting right. that. Uh, it will be planned when? It'll for the January 18th. January 18th. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, language on the 1,000 hour employees, which uh, Director Guerrero asked me if it could be moved for the first meeting in January, and I said that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Mayor Portem Castro? Yes, I want for the next uh, council meeting. Yes, I would like the full report or on business license waivers for the last year. I'm talking about 209. 
Okay. La license waivers. Business license okay. waivers? Yes. Business uh, license I, 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 waiver for fiscal year 2009, 2010? 2829. Oh, 2829, sir. Okay. Is that all? That all. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hodge? Well, <clears throat> I hope the third time is a charm. <laughs> Hence, for the third time, I'm requesting that we put That's on the agenda third time? to discuss, vote, or give direction that we write and have a basic accounting manual. Oh. Basic accounting manual. Ms. Hurtado? No. Okay. The hearing officer, I'd like to make an appointment if that's possible. I'd like to appoint Mike Davis as the administrative hearing officer. Is that for the next meeting? Yeah. Any other comments? No. Meeting adjourned. Merry Christmas. <laughs>